So welcome back. For those that are going to be watching this on recording later, welcome to the Big Cloud event. And this is an awesome section because the opportunities that I tried to describe that are possible with big infrastructures and whatnot, probably one of the best examples and happens to be a company that was based in Minneapolis, now moving their headquarters to Silicon Valley, called Fair Isaac, which we all know is FICO. So since we all know our FICO score and either love it or hate it, which you don't need to discuss offline, uh, there is so much more of what's possible when you have all that kind of data and information. And rather than just have her try to give you the background, I thought I'd take this opportunity to give you an example of what Big Cloud Sales does when a cloud vendor asks us to see what we can find that's interesting in Fair Isaac. So this is not endorsed by Fair Isaac, so they may dislike this. You can disavow of anything that you hear, but here's about 10 minutes worth of an example of if you were to work with Big Cloud Sales, this is the type of information that you should expect to receive back. So it starts by saying they're the ERP of financial services. And no, they don't sell an ERP solution, but they're at the core of any big decision where there's money involved, and hence loans being a core one that that started off at. But it started as the welcome wagon. If you remember back to early shows or have heard stories of, from your grandparents where people would come over and bring baskets of food and talk about who their kids are and what their ages are, what they liked, that was the data gathering of old school. And that's literally the foundings of how the concept of Fair Isaac came about. We now have a lot better and automated ways to go grab the information, but it started with the welcome wagon. So if you've seen It's a Wonderful Life in Bailey Park, and whether you think that that's a good thing to do on making loans or not a good thing to do, at the end of the day, you run into problems when that happens, and you watch the rest of the movie to find out. But that's how loans were done before Fair Isaac existed. Well, we have rocket scientists in the world that both deal with rockets and there's several that work at places like Fair Isaac, and here's one of the quotes saying, rocket scientists have nothing on people that deal with the analytics and the algorithms that go into it. And so if you're trying to go in and talk to Fair Isaac, CEO on down, don't use the term big data and throw it around like it's something sexy and new. Even the CEO is mocking it. So again, the context of knowing who you're talking to is saying big data or cloud going to get them excited because they're behind on the learning curve or are they ahead? Well, Fair Isaac is an example of a company that's very far ahead. And that's not the way to take a FICO score, but there's actually a supermodel named FICO. And so if you wanted to have a nice conversation with Fair Isaac, you could bring up uh, how you think that guy's probably going to get a lawsuit unless he's the one that's married to her. But anyway, separate from those kind of little anecdotes and jokes to give you some context, here is the actual FICO score. I'm not here to teach you about it, but if you had hired me to go look up Fair Isaac, this is one of the table stakes things you would just need to know if you're going to go have a conversation with Fair Isaac. You might come to the conclusion that the whole scoring process is backwards, but I'll leave that to your discretion. The reason it exists is because of this guy. Anyone in this room actually recognize this guy from this commercial? I'll describe it to you in a second, but okay, a couple hands are raising. He essentially in the real estate started taking off at the same time that credit started taking off. And his recommendation was take out a whole bunch of credit cards, borrow all the cash from several cards, pull it together, buy a property, and flip it before you have to pay that credit card back at the end of the month. And he was helping people for at least a period of time make a pretty good return off of it. Well, the credit card companies that didn't turn out so well or get the money back because the property didn't sell inside of that month uh, wished they had scores that had real-time information about how much credit you're taking out, when you're taking it out, and having that impact the score that they used to decide on lending you money. Anyway, interesting backstory to why FICO became an obvious thing to go build into these custom loan decisions. Well, and by the way, whatever your FICO score is, 40% of the world has considered the perfect or best range to you can get the lowest loan. So if you're bitching or hear someone that's bitching about their FICO score, they're probably not in that 40%. All right, as we keep going, click, click. There we go. There's two different kind of inquiries into your FICO score, a soft or a hard one. And that means when, for any credit card you have outstanding, there's a ping still going on that every month to check out uh, your volume and all the different data points about it. That's a soft score. It's not just when you apply for credit do they ping it. So there actually is a lot of interaction and transactions going on, and that's part of what makes the infrastructure that FICO runs and manages very meaty and big. They have roughly 90% share of people that use a score of some kind to make a financial-based decision. So depending on your perspective of Fair Isaac, they either have... 10% uh, only left to go, or they have 90% to lose. But they dominate that part of the market. And so FACO, F-A-K-O, is actually not a real term, doesn't stand for anything. It's just meant to be the rip on anything that's not Fair Isaac. 
Uh, there's people that have tried to come up with scores because banks don't want to spend as much money to pay the rates that they need to get the kind of data that a FICO score produces. So if you asked Fair Isaac, what we've heard when I listened was they're baked into these decisions. So it's not like even if someone else had a score, they could plug it in to the loan decision-making application and have it spit out the same result. So just one context, but one of those examples of a competing firm is called Vantage Score. And of all things, it's from the three credit unions that make up 18% of Fair Isaac's revenue. So what did they do? One thing, they tried to simplify it into an A, B, C, D, F grade. And you say that's either dumbing it down or making it more appropriate. But what they've really done is go after something different. There's actually people that don't have credit out there. And if you don't have credit, there's no way to have a score based on anything that you've done. So there's 30 million Americans in this group of three credit unions who, again, are customers and partners with Fair Isaac. They are trying to go after that 30 million people in the US that don't have a score and help people that when they do apply for their first time of credit, there's still some way to make a measurement or a qualification on it. Very interesting opportunity that I'm sure Fair Isaac will also find a way to pursue, but that's the advantage that they're going after. So there's more and more data. But people are wanting to start tracking your utility bill, whether you pay for your newspaper, whether you pay your cable bill on time. All those things are unique new data points that are currently not being tracked in mass or could be tracked more. But then you also think about this commercial you've watched, the freecreditscore.com. They make up a little jingle. They got fired for a little while. They got hired back on. They're actually owned by one of those three credit unions, Experian in this case. So when you see that and get excited about it, if you've actually gone there, you wasted money because you could get one free each year. But anyway, that aside, why FICO is interesting rather than going to that Vantage <coughs> score or something else, the person that's managing a portfolio of loans at any bank or whatever it might be, they actually get a dashboard of all of our loans collected up into one and the ability to drill down into the scores one after another. That's why this thing won't get displaced quickly, easily, or potentially even ever. The data points you'd want to know about them, there's many that are really interesting. 75% of all loans in the US come from Fair Isaac. They actually spend 60 million a year on R&D for a company that's under a billion in revenue. That's a lot of money, so you can expect a lot of good things to come out of it. Uh, 5,000 clients and a bunch of other stuff that I would go into more detail with you if this was you asking, how do I go learn about Fair Isaac so I can have a great relationship with them? Well, Scores is not a massive part of their business. Almost 200 million, it's growing at 2%. The application, slightly larger, the dominating part of the business, growing a little faster. But tools, smallest part, growing the fastest. That's where new things are being created. That's where the interesting stuff that isn't just being maintained is really happening. Breaks down into four different products, but essentially is it's either a custom decision-making application, such as a loan, or it's a one that they can just buy the score directly from Fair Isaac and run with it. They're going after many other big markets that I could describe to you later, but I'm going to give you one example in a second. They're trying to take all these things and make it SaaS. So for any of you cloud vendors in the room, you're going to want to spend some time because there's a lot of stuff they're going to be doing, not just today, this month, this year, but it's a big project. It's a big undertaking because you're also trying to get the enterprises, these financial banks and whatnot, to go from an on-prem installed custom application to wanting to run some of that transaction or some of the workflow in an outsourced data center. So until they're fully SaaS, you're going to want to keep talking. They didn't have a CIO for a couple of years. Uh, just joined last November. So again, if you're wanting to go talk to them, you're going to want to meet this person. You're going to understand their background. Where did they come from coming into this role? One of the solutions they acquired, they acquired four companies for about 100 million total called the Deptra. If any of you on your phones have gotten a message from your bank saying there's potentially fraud or something unique happened or checking on something, I'm almost 100% sure because I think it's the only solution out there that that's coming from Adeptra. So the concept here was uh, Fair Isaac monitors for fraud. They see something. They alert the bank. The bank sits there and says, that's cool. I hope they don't do too much bad stuff so I don't have to go retrofix something 30 days later. Adeptra is something that the bank can choose in the case of getting this fraud alert, send an automatic phone call or send an automatic text based on whatever way they want to relate to the customer. Beautiful solution, great acquisition, something they're going to be able to tie in nicely. There's an image of what it would look like. Next one they acquired is CR software in the collections business. So if the world ever falls off a cliff and shits the bed again, like it did several years ago, there's going to be a ton of people that go delinquent, and there's going to be a lot of collections in there. Well, the collections department is going to have a finite number of people. Granted, they'll have a bigger pool of people to hire from if the world shits the bed again. But until that happens, they have to manage that back and forth of number of people versus an unknown workload of what they need to try to collect now, tomorrow, next week. That's going to become a SaaS app as well. It's going to become the part of the portfolio. But the most exciting thing to me is we bring this to close and get the genius on stage. 
the medical adherence score. Whether you love Obamacare, whether you hate it, I happen to be on the latter side of it, but the concept is it's going to give more care to more people and lower the cost of care. Great. Well, how do you do that? There's a lot of things that go into it. The medical adherence score is one of the things that could. So this was launched by Fair Isaac over a year ago. I'll let her go into the details, but the punchline is 40% of prescriptions are not even filled. Of those that are filled, half are not taken to its completion. The other half are likely not taken correctly. And it's a very small percent of people that actually take their, get their prescription filled and use it entirely correctly. If there was a way to go track the actual usage of every pill you're prescribed and taking it on time at the right time, that would be the perfect solution, but that's not going to happen. So instead of that, they're going to try to use data just like they had for the FICO score to be able to track how likely are you based on where you live, uh, your in uh, income guesstimations. There's a whole bunch of data they're trying to grab and letting that become something that can influence possibly the cost of your health care. If, you if you get sick and you take a pill, you should get better, and as a result, you should have lower cost of insurance because you're lower cost long term to the hospital or doctor. Fascinating concept to me, and the think of the data that will be out there and the new applications that get designed for this across hospitals, insurance companies, the brokers that resell the insurance. It's huge. And so as I round this out, that was the punchline and the big thing that I wanted to get to. But the number of banks in the country is shrinking. So for Fair Isaac to really grow, absent those kind of health fair things, they want to go down market. Well, they may not want to go that far down market, but if they wanted to become a credit union, they actually could do that because you can't become a bank unless one of the executives has been in banking for three or more years. But they could become a credit union and use this information and not sell it to anybody else. That would be a big FU to the whole industry. I don't think they're going to do that at all. Uh, but they also have different ways to the importance of the things you buy. Did you know that well, it, a lot of you probably know that Target story of the baby and the dad finding out that the daughter was pregnant before the daughter told the dad? You can get a lot of information from understanding SKUs. Well, Visa and MasterCard actually don't buy the SKU level data of what we've purchased individually. American Express does. Interesting sidebar discussion. Fair Isaac sells stuff. You know Susie Orman? I happen to think she's annoying. No offense, Susie, if you're watching. But that's one of the things resold through Fair Isaac's website. And why don't they have a Fair Isaac mobile app? Well, they did. This is actually a screenshot of what it looked like. They don't have one live now. Why they don't? Maybe she'll answer. But this looks good because the alternative is Credit Karma, where I have to enter all the information myself. It's not grabbing any of my payment data. Why would I want to use this app where I've got to enter it and guess myself? I'd want to just go back to the core source. So I look forward to them relaunching a mobile app and potentially getting into loyalty cards. Am I more likely to pay my Delta American Express card than I am my generic bank visa? Probably. Hopefully I get to pay them all off for the rest of time. But if I had to choose, this is a data point in the loyalty points industry that I think they'd want to factor in. Here's data supporting why loyalty is important. They could also go, just like cigarette companies, go tell you not to smoke and spend money advertising. They could go spend money on a nonprofit, such as improving your credit score, and here's how, and we'll fund that. On Glassdoor, employee reviews, there's only 28 people or so that have reviewed management and their CEO. Everyone says good things in the print, but the ratings actually are kind of low. We could discuss those different kind of things. Uh, but they're leaving Minnesota, sadly. They've been a great, wonderful, headquartered company here. Uh, but they're going to where the action is. And the action for big data and all these things is going to be out west. So my last pretty picture is anywhere you see a decision, expect that Fair Isaac is behind the door. Videos. So well, thank you for being a part of the inaugural Big Cloud event in Minneapolis, Minnesota. We'll see you next year in March. To all of you, thank you. To our sponsors, thank you very much. Have a great night, everyone.